What a week it's been. Unbelievable. I We started the channel about two weeks ago. Sunday, actually, it will be two weeks ago. There's five videos uploaded. You guys have subscribed to the tune of almost 2,000, which is completely beyond any of my imagination that, that I could have thought of or dreamt of. Uh, I think we're close to 24, 25,000 views in total. One of the videos uh, talking about my five records to set up your hi-fi has almost 9,000 views at the time of this video. The Miles Davis UHQR video that I did with the shootout for the, the 50th anniversary, the Mobile Fidelity, the Classic Records 45 and 33, that almost has 9,000 views. I think it's about 8,500, 8,600. You guys are absolutely amazing. I, I can't thank you enough. I love, love the comments. The comments are so awesome to read. The, the questions you guys ask, the, the well wishes, the thoughts you guys share, uh, the recommendations that I get out of it, absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much for, for caring to tune in. And, you know, the sky's the limit, right? I mean, I, I, you know, I hope to, to be able to validate all the things that I'm doing with, with these videos. You know, feel free to comment on, you know, what would you like to see? Uh, many of you have asked me, you know, a hi-fi tour of the room and all that. It's coming, trust me. Many of you guys want, you know, more music recommendations, um, you know, hi-fi gear reviews, that's all coming. But give me an idea of what kind of a, I guess what type of review you guys want to see, right? I mean, there's tons of amazing stuff on YouTube where folks are, are reviewing, you know, gear very, you know, from, from like, you know, uh, top on down, bottom up. Um, you know, what do you guys want to see? How do you guys want these reviews to come across, right? Because, I mean, obviously, you know, you can Google my name and you'll find a ton of reviews that I've written over the last 20 years. So, you know, curious to see your thoughts. And, of course, I forgot the most important part. Welcome to my channel, uh, to everyone who's new. Danny K is the name and Sonic Flare is the game. Today I wanted to kind of pivot a little bit and throw in like a, a weekly news show, right? A couple of items that kind of catch my eye from a weekly perspective of stuff that I read. And, you know, just share them with you, give you my, my, my two thoughts and two cents on it. The first big one is finally rumored after so many, many years, Apple is ready to launch Apple Hi-Fi. Their, their Apple Music is going to have an Apple Hi-Fi Music tier. And it's been rumored forever. It's uh, apparently going to be available up to $24,192 in Apple Lossless, of course. What else? And, uh, you know, Mastered for iTunes, which is their sort of, uh, you know, umbrella program that uh, studios have to submit their material for which has done really well for them, uh, even with just the, uh, the the lossy, compressed AAC files that have been on at 320 kps. In fact, Apple was the first one of the big uh, streamers to to offer 320 kps, if I'm not mistaken. And so, you know, the the question that I have, of course, is, you know, who's this going to be for, and what is going to happen with Title, Cobas? Uh, Spotify, right? I mean, Spotify, I think they are, they're at about 170 million subscribers. And, you know, I think there's still a fairly big gap uh, from an Apple perspective. The benefit, obviously, that Apple has is it comes built in on every device. You have to download Spotify. Then again, you know, Spotify is very big on Android. And so, you know, it'll be interesting to see how this pans out. I mean, of course, Spotify is launching their own hi-fi tier, they beta tested that about a year ago, a year and a half ago, and from what I've heard, it's it's you know been going really well. Um, you know, there's obviously Spotify Connect in a lot of uh, music streamers, a lot of DAX now that 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 are pre-installed as a uh, as an endpoint for Spotify, so you can just literally uh, use your phone or or iPad or tablet uh, or even computer. And you know, stream directly to your DAC. And so, how's how's Apple Hi-Fi gonna play in that? It's gonna be interesting. The one thing that I think is very interesting is it's going to launch. Of course, Apple had to do something very Apple-esque 
and Apple E, uh, which is that they are including Dolby 360 audio uh, Atmos to the uh, the the streams, right? I think there's only going to be a couple thousand artists or songs or albums that are going to be uh, part of Dolby Atmos. And, you know, I'm sure as time goes on, it's going to develop, it's going to keep building. And so we'll see. I mean, you know, the one thing that, that Apple is very, very good at, mark my words on that, is training people, everyday consumers, to leverage technology for their personal use in a way that they never thought of before, that they never considered before, or frankly, that they never thought they needed. Apple is very, very good at that. They're the best at it, right? And so I have no doubt in my mind that, you know, in time, as this hi-fi tier picks up, and by the way, they're not charging any extra money for it, which is brilliant as well, right? Um, I think what's going to be interesting to see is over time, six months, 12 months, a year, two years from now, what is the consumer sentiment going to be on capturing that fidelity component, particularly Dolby Atmos, uh, with headphones, of course, right? I mean, that's going to be really the key play for that, I think. Uh, I mean, clearly, you know, they're going to be, you know, most likely the the most likely suspects for Dolby Atmos delivery are going to be AirPods and the, you know, AirPod Max, uh, the AirPod Pros, the AirPods. So there's going to be there's rumors that there's going to be a, a new uh, third generation AirPod. And so, you know, that that's like, you know, almost predestined for Dolby Atmos because, you know, you really can control the environment because you've got earbuds, right? Uh, or headphones with the AirPod Max, which are fabulous, by the way. I've, I've had a pair for a couple of months now. And so, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. Moreover, what again, as I mentioned earlier, what's going to happen to Tidal? What's going to happen to... Deezer to, um, you know, Cobas, all these smaller, much, much smaller streaming services that, you know, frankly, are going to be at incredible competitive pressure. So anyway, uh, I, I think the launch date was June, rumored to be June. Of course, Apple never, you know, pre-announces anything like that. It comes out when it is on apple.com. That's when it's out, right? So we're all going to be watching and, and checking in and, and taking a look at what Apple Hi-Fi tier is going to do. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I think it's going to be pretty cool. And like I said, the biggest component is Apple teaches people how to do things they never thought they needed to do. Uh, you know, just think back, Apple TV and Apple TV 4K, right? Uh, you know, 4K, everybody now knows what 4K is. Granted, you know, Apple wasn't the first to, to launch 4K. I mean, of course, all the big TV manufacturers were big on that. So anyway, it's going to be interesting. Uh, the next item on my news list is a big one. DS Audio. Of course, you guys know, and I'll link this to, uh, to, to the channel below. Uh, I did a video with uh, Michael Ludwig's at 45 RPM audio file about DS Audio a couple of months ago. I've been using DS Audio optical cartridges and the DS Audio optical cartridge amplifier as well as uh, the great Ed Meitner's EMM Labs DS EQ1 uh, uh, optical cartridge amplifier for the last couple of months and color me amazingly impressed. So this is, to, to those that haven't seen or heard about optical cartridges yet, it's really nothing new in the sense Toshiba came out with this about 50 years ago, late 60s, and it's essentially leveraging uh, optical light conversion instead of using magnets to trace and amplify or create an electrical signal from the groove. So it still uses a cantilever. It still uses a stylus. And instead of using a magnet to convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy through either an MC or an MM uh, cartridge, it uses optical diodes uh, with a, a sort of like, a, um, 
I guess the best way to describe it would be uh, like an umbrella where the, the vibrational energy of the cantilever again moves up and down and the photodiodes capture that shadow that falls behind on the, the, the umbrella, if it were. And that's what gets converted into optical, or excuse me, to elect, into electrical energy. And think of it, even DS Audio says this, it's kind of like the principle of an optical mouse uh, for your computer, right? So that's, that's sort of the parameter of how this works. It is not digital by any means. It is pure analog. And it is absolutely, in my opinion, the next big thing for cartridge development, for vinyl playback. Even the smallest um, cartridge that they make, the least expensive cartridge that they make, the E1, the DS Audio E1, with the accompanying uh, phono amplifier box, which retails in the US for about $2,700. I don't think, big words now, I don't think you can find an MC or MM cartridge with phono amplifier for $2,700 that will beat, match, or let alone exceed what this little E1 cartridge can do. It is truly amazing. I would strongly urge you, if you have an opportunity, if you have a dealer in your area, listen to it, check it out, uh, you know, see if you can, uh, uh, if they have a loan program or something. I think especially for, you know, the, the I wouldn't say the entry level of turntables, but, you know, the, the, that sort of entry to mid-tier turntable, I, in 20 years of doing this professionally, and, and much longer than that as, as, as a hobbyist, I guess, I have not found or heard a moving coil or moving magnet cartridge, again, keep in mind, with phono amplifier for $2,700 that comes close to what this E1 can do. And then when you go up to the Grandmaster, which is what I've had in my system now for, for the last couple of months with uh, the EMM Labs, Ed Meitner's designed um, phono, -amp uh, phono amplifier for that, it's unbelievable. Truly unbelievable. I'm pulling out records left and right that I've heard a million times, and guess what? I'm listening to them from scratch. There is so much more information being pulled out of the grooves there's so much more information being converted. Absolutely stunning. Truly stunning. So keep an eye out on that. They're coming out with a new cartridge. And uh, they posted it on Instagram. So if you follow them, DS Audio on Instagram is their handle. You can see a picture of it. It, From the looks of it, it appears to be very similar to the Grandmaster. Except instead of using a white uh, diode for, for the light coming out, uh, it uses a blue one. Right. And so, but that's just cosmetic. I mean, that light in and of itself has really nothing to do with the, the photo sensors, the photodiodes that are inside the cartridge. That's just a cosmetic thing on the outside. It looks very cool, very sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, finally we've got something new to look at. Cartridges always kind of look the same over the last, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. So this presents a new, uh, new perspective on cartridge design. Check it out. I think you're going to like it. I don't know where this cartridge falls. I'm, I'm assuming since the Grandmaster, which was just introduced four or five months ago, is at the top of the line that this will probably be either an entry-level cartridge, maybe a mid-level cartridge. Um, phenomenal stuff. Absolutely phenomenal. I strongly recommend you check it out. The third point on the news section that I want to cover is Perfect Vinyl Forever. <clears throat> Steve Evans, you can look it up, perfectvinylforever.com. Steve Evans is the man behind Perfect Vinyl Forever, and he has created a what I can only describe as a supercharged, super high-def, incredible cleaning process for your records that goes way above and beyond what a KL Audio can do, which is what I have, 
what an audio desk can do, which is what I used to have until it broke for the fourth time and I got rid of it. This was a couple of years ago when KL Audio was still in business and I bought a KL Audio. I never looked back. Those are ultrasonic record cleaning machines. Let me tell you something. The, the ultrasonic cleaning machines, I've had Laura Crafts. I've had uh, uh, clear audio cleaning machines. I had Flusterbeer from, from Austria. Once you went beyond that sort of wet cleaning and vacuum suction method to ultrasonic, the difference was night and day. I normally don't say things like this very often, but let me tell you, this Perfect Vinyl Forever system is several notches above and beyond ultrasonic cleaning. It also uses ultrasonic cleaning, but what Steve developed as far as chemical formula and you know pre-rinse formula and after-rinse formula, and I guess the just the apparatus itself, if you look on the website, check it out. It, it's way beyond a KL Audio, an Audio Desk, or, or it, the degritter that just came out. Way beyond it. Uh, I've had now a second charge of records that came in. I sent him 64 records. The second set came in. And at first, the, when the first set came in, I was like, this is like crazy. I mean, some of these records literally sounded like they were remastered. Uh, new records as well as old used records. And... You know, I was like, okay, you know, hey, maybe this was like a, a, a fluke, right? Maybe this was, you know, the the something happened, you know, all the planets aligned. So I was like, all right, let me send him another set of 32 records for a total of 64. And um, paid for the service, of course. This is not freebie. This is not publicity of, of, of that kind. What I got back, again, completely validated what I thought of this process, which is just absolutely unbelievable. If you're in the US, and this is the only real caveat to his process, is that you, you know, shipping cost is just prohibitively expensive. If you ship stuff in and out from Germany or anywhere in Europe, Italy, whatever, Spain, or, you know, not to mention uh, the Far East, Middle East, uh, Asia, uh, you know, it's just going to be prohibitively expensive to send stuff to him. But if you're in the US, I would urge you, call Steve Evans, email him, check out perfectvinylforever.com, and trust me, you will not be disappointed with what you're going to get back once you send him the records out. And, uh, you know, actually, one of the things, I'm, I'm so impressed with it that I reached out to Steve, and we're going to be doing a show uh, where he can explain the whole intricacies of the, the process behind it, and uh, curious to see what you guys think of it. And, and I think it's going to be a great show. I mean, the guy is, is a chemist. He really knows what he's talking about. And frankly, uh, I am completely impressed with it. So, you know, we'll see what happens. That's it for the news this week. Thanks for checking that out, checking in. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this sort of delivery. I'm trying to figure out what makes sense. Uh, did I go too long, too short? You guys want to hear more of this stuff, less of this stuff? But of course, I can't end the show on just a news note. I got a bunch of new records in, unfortunately, or I guess I should say fortunately. The first one of which, uh, Steve McQueen Bullet. You got to get this. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. Well, there we go. Steve McQueen Bullet. Check it out. Absolutely phenomenal soundtrack. I have an original that's noisy as all get out. This is the Speaker's Corner reissue. Absolutely phenomenal soundtrack. Um, you know, Lalo Schifrin, the great Lalo Schifrin, uh, composed and wrote this score. And, I mean, it's jazzy, it's funky. You know, well, if you've seen the the, the movie Bullet, um, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, the chasing with the car is all in here. Phenomenal. Absolutely great. Um, iconic, I would say. Listen to it. The next one that I got is actually a mono copy. Uh, as you guys are starting to get to know me, uh, you know that I love mono. So Chad at Acoustic Sounds reissued um, uh, Tennessee Ernie Ford's record on stereo. And think of this as, you know, in the vein of Dream with Dean, minimalist arrangement, uh, you know, tennis, the great Tennessee Ernie Ford, you know, 
he's got so many records out, you know, the, the, the Schlockmeister of Schlock, right? Uh, you know, so many kitschy records out there, kind of like Liberace and all these guys, you know, even Dean Martin, right? I mean, he's had so many amazing records out, but there are so many that are just like, eh, you know, I don't really care to listen to them too much. This is what Chad picked. Absolutely stunning. This mono copy, even though, yes, with the stereo version, you get that depth, you get the sound stage, but there's a, a certain level of intimacy with this mono copy that is, it's something to behold. And, and I challenge you, uh, if you have a, a, a mono cartridge um, or just a mono switch on your preamp, that's fine too. Uh, check this out. It's not expensive. You can get this for 10, 15 bucks on Discogs or eBay. Absolutely terrific. And last but not least, we have, of course, the latest two versions of the titles that uh, Chad is doing in collaboration. This one with uh, on, on the Impulse label, of course, the great Gil Evans. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, nice gatefold. Actually, here, sorry. Nice gatefold. Um, cut from the original tapes. They were not destroyed in that big universal fire. They were uh, preserved, cut from the original tapes, out of the cool. You got to have this album. This is quintessential. I mean, Gil Evans was such an incredible arranger and conductor that um, the, the, the Gil Evans orchestra here is doing such an incredible job. You really get lost in these tunes. Uh, and, and of course, when you look at all the, the, the work that he's done, absolutely stunning. And of course the sound is, you know, to die for, as you can imagine. And then of course the other impulse title that came out is the great Ray Charles. And uh, again, uh, you know, Ray Charles, look, this is big band at its finest with Quincy Jones, of course. Um, uh, uh, it just, you know, what a killer album, uh, a nice gatefold as well. You see a little great picture there. Uh, and yeah, just phenomenal. Cut from the tapes again. And you got to check this out. It's really great stuff. Acoustic sounds, Chad Kassam. He puts so much passion and effort into these reissues. And, you know, the, the, the Verve group, you know, Impulse, etc. All the titles that are coming out. Buy now or cry later. I'll use Chad's own words, right? They're not expensive. They're 30 bucks, 35 bucks. They're still in print. They're not limited editions. They're available. I don't know how much, how many more times this is going to be reissued. Get it now. Don't cry later. That's it. Thanks for tuning in. Look forward to reading all the comments again. And uh, we will chat soon. Look forward to catching up. Bye.